one, and we are officially live. I'm with my man, Michael Hendon. This is Mike Wall back again with another, another episode of the Agent Revolution podcast where we deconstruct the biggest challenges facing today's real estate agents so that they can build a sustainable, profitable, and most of all, fulfilling real estate business. I'm super stoked today, man. Uh, Michael, I've had the pleasure of hearing you on a couple of other podcasts, and I've been um, I've been excited about getting you on because you offer another dimension to seller lead generation. And I know right now uh, sellers are in short supply. So I know yeah. you're going to drop some absolute gold on today's episode. Welcome to the podcast, my man. Thanks for having me. I appreciate it and the kind words. And I'll, uh, I'll um, release some of the information from my small brain that I can to to help everybody out there increase their business. But um, it's like you were talking about. Um, I think we're going to talk about estates and probates today. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. And you're the man to do that. I'm, I'm, uh, I, I, I have an investment business too. And it's weird because like there, it's really two separate worlds. You know, a lot of times realtors don't invest and investors don't sell real estate other than, you know, whatever they, they purchase. Um, but the, the lead generation, it seems like to me that, that investors have a really good grasp on seller lead generation and I'm not sure why that is because, um, you know, it really is they, 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 the, the two industries, they, they kind of correlate and run side by side. But we'll, we'll talk um, some more about that. But before we get into that, let's talk a little bit about your personal story, um, how you got into real estate, where you came from and how you got to where you are today. Sure. I've been in the real estate game for 17 years now. This is my 17th year. I was in corporate sales. I had a degree from uh, marketing and advertising from the University of Kentucky. Woo woo. And uh, graduated there in 94. Got into, um, actually worked with my degree in advertising there in C downtown Cincinnati, close to you. Nice. Um, for a year or so. And then got into telecom, selling for telecom. And then eventually was selling in uh, uh, for another company out of uh, Miami of Ohio called MCSI, doing oh. audiovisual sales. And that company went belly up and I had been getting my license at the time. And I was like, well, I guess I'm selling real estate full time now. And my first year, I sold 30 houses um, just by applying what we knew in, in direct corporate sales to uh, going out and just not dumb luck, but talking to a lot of people and asking a lot of questions. Scaling conversations. Yeah. That's yeah. what you got to do. So you, um, you were previously a Remax guy, right? I was Remax for 16 years, and okay. I've been with EXP for uh, 14 months now. So just over just over a year. Hit my anniversary back in August, and it was it's been a it's been a great move for me. And that's a that's a whole other conversation, as you know. Yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> yeah that's awesome, man. And um, so, when did you add in probate and estate sales into your lead generation? Probably about six to seven years ago. Okay, I'm I'm 47 years old, so uh, I don't want to say it was by accident, but I don't know how you how old you are, but right I'm now, 42. so so there you go. So um, we have the largest, um, I guess, transfer of wealth going on in the United States right now, with the baby boomers starting to pass away. The front end of the baby boomers are getting old. That's just the way that we're all going to that big real estate place in the sky, right? Yeah. <laughs> so, and not, not to sound morbid, it's just a natural flow of life. And I found myself, even to this day, I've been going to more funerals for friends of our parents. Our parents, you know, I lost my mom three years ago, lost my dad two years ago. And it, again, um, it's unfortunate, but yeah. it's just that age that we're in. And with that, people are calling me saying, you know, we need to sell mom's house. We need to sell dad's house. Or they're going to a nursing home, things like that. And I'm just thinking, you know, there, there could be a, a couple of nuggets here. So I actively started to go out and, and find some systems. And uh, met a, I was in Mike Ferry coaching, still am, yeah, yeah. for a long time. And a uh, guy, Michael Young, who's in San Francisco, he would always get up on stage and talk about, I think, 70, 80 percent of his business was coming from um, estates or probates, a lot of referrals from the attorneys that he was working with. Sure. And uh, so I searched him out and we had some great conversations and kind of chimed into the system that he was doing. Um, I do more with the, the, the executors and the administrators than I do with the, 
the attorneys, but I'm actually, I'm actively growing that segment of my business as well. Okay. So you said you've been doing it for about six or seven years. Yes. Why the transition into, um, into probate and, and, and estate sales? Or how, what, what brought that about? So 50, you know, by design, 50 to 60% of my business is still going to be sphere of influence past clients. And if, okay. if, if, if you're not doing that, then get out of the business because there's something wrong with you. So yeah. I would say 20 to 30% of my business is probates and estates. Um, I'm that's always, a significant I was, amount. it is, it is. And that's why I'm, you know, I try to, I, I want it to be more, but I don't want it to be so much that, um, you know, I like having for lack of a better term, lots of legs on the table, mm -hmm. revenue producing areas, whether you're fishing in, you know, the expired pond for sale by owners, just listed, just sold. I still do all that as well, but there's so many people that are doing it. You know, I've just seen such a reduction in, in our area, there's just not a lot of expires, not a lot of canceled or withdrawns, and everybody's calling them. So by the time, I mean, I still get business from them, sure. But and I do a lot of just list and just sold, just try to supplement. But with everybody calling those, I'm like, I got to you know make a bigger pond to fish out of, right. and I know that this is a different kind of call that not a lot of people will make because it's a different, it's a different. Uh, sales transition period it's a longer sale because you call these people they could be three or four months in mm -hmm. and they haven't even been in the house yet and it's it's very emotional you have to be very compassionate on the call mm -hmm. and you have to be able to to stick with them because they may they may have multiple errors that are making it hard to get the property either cleaned out um cleaned up ready for market. They, they could, they may not want to go in there for six months because it was just, again, their mom or dad could have just passed away. So you have to ask right. a lot of questions and find out where they are and really get in there with them. And, and you're going up against, and that's, that's what I'll talk about is when I call an executor, I'm trying to find out, okay, where are they right now? How many layers of, of letters have they gotten from um, investors? You just said, there's a yeah. lot of investors out there right now because that, foreclosure market has shriveled up so much. Yeah. The short sale market's non-existent. So um, investors, they still have to find a place to find good deals. Let's go to estates. Mm -hmm. So when I'm calling them, I'm saying, have you gotten a lot of mailers? And they're like, yeah, we've got a lot of investors that are looking to steal the property. So those defenses are up. Yeah. Oh yeah. And my job is to take them down and say, you know, Mr. Seller, I can understand somebody's trying to come in and give you 75,000 or 80,000 for, your mom and dad's house. I want to go the opposite way with that. I want to maximize the return and honor your mother and father. And, you know, this is an $80,000 house. Great. Wouldn't you, wouldn't your mom and dad want you to sell this 440, 150 and give you and your brothers and sisters the most amount of money from all the hard work that they've done all these years. Love it. So if I can come in there and be the you know, the knight in shining honor, white knight, whatever you want to call it, that's going to get my foot in the door because I come across a place of compassion. And these people over here, the investors, this is just what I say. I don't look at investors this way. I say, you've got a bunch of bottom feeders trying to steal your mom and dad's property, right? Yeah. So I'm turning it and getting on their side. And a lot of times that'll get me in the door. Yeah, dude, it's, it's I love it, man. And you know, you, you, it's not, it's just, it's not, it's not that you're looking down on the investment community. It's just about positioning and that's really what it is. And, and at the end of the day, the reality of it is, I mean, sellers want to get the most amount of money for their property, you know sure. what I mean? And that's not, it's not always possible, but you know, you've worked out a, and we'll talk some more about some of the things that it's not just as easy as that. You've actually worked out some special programs to help people transition and you've got a list of contractors and sure. You offer a lot and, and you've 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 kind of figured that out along the way that, you know, if, if you're going to differentiate yourself, you have to really differ, differentiate yourself and be able to back up what you say. But at the end of the day, man, I don't, there's nothing wrong with that to me. Like, I love it. It's all about positioning yourself as as the as the person to get them the most amount of money. And whether that's a, a an investor paying them cash or where that that's somebody selling it on on the secondary market. Um, the, 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 the checks are, are the same. You know what I mean? They're, one's just bigger than the other one. And if you can offer them the, the, the more, the more value, then I don't see any reason why they wouldn't, you know, listen. Absolutely. And I, and I tell a story all the time. I had a doctor client and I called them 
And um, he was saying, well, I've gotten offers for 75, 80,000. And it was, a, it was a typical cookie cutter, three bedroom, one bath ranch, Bedford Stone. I'm sure you've got a ton of those sure. in your area. And it was his mom and dad's house. And um, I said, well, heck, I'll give you 81 for it, <laughs> laughingly. But we went over there and I, and I said, you know, let's look at this from a tiered aspect. And that's what I always say to, to the executor. Go over there, take a look at the property. Well, he had this, this ugly green shag carpet on there from the 19... 19- 50s, 60s, whatever it was. So these beautiful pine hardwood floors had not seen the light of day for 50 years underneath there. And I said, let me ask you a question. Do you have some money in the account? He's like, yeah, mom, mom's got some money. I said, if you spend two, three thousand dollars, pull all this carpeting up with all the pad, give it a nice shine, paint these walls a nice neutral color. I said, we can take you from an eighty thousand dollar offer that you're getting from investors to one hundred and fifty thousand dollars on the market. He took my advice. He did that. And, and I brought in, I said, I'll do all the work. I'll get my guy in here that did all the work. Took him a week to do the painting. And yeah. we converted that. Sold for $150,000 in day one. That's amazing. And, but what, what I want people to hear there is that you, a lot of people, like some some of the, the stop gap is that sellers, they don't know, they feel like, especially if they're out of state, right? Mm-hmm. It, they don't know co- local contractors. They don't want to manage local contractors. So what did you do there? You bridged the gap yes. between you essentially overcame that objection before it ever became one, right? I've had because- I've had 20 executors that I've never met, yeah. meaning I've built trust with them and they'll mail me the key or they'll have maybe a, a, a sister or brother-in-law or some relative or friend that will let me into the property. I'll go over there and check it out and I'll say, look, let me handle this. Have you gotten all the belongings out that you want, like, you know, you know, heirlooms, clocks, antiques, things like that? And they're like, yeah, the rest of it's just trash. You can give it to the the Goodwill or DAV or whatever charity that you have in your area. And I'll, I'll say, I'll, I'll, I'll manage this. So I'll have my assistant make some calls. People show up, clean it out. Then I'll have my guy come over there, clean it out. We'll send them the bill. And... And I say, look, here's, would it be okay with you if you just didn't have to come into town and just got a check at closing? Yeah. And they're like, is that possible? I said, well, I can send you the contract elect- electronically. I do all the photos, put it online. And that's exactly what happened. They overnighted the, the, um, the closing forms to them. And again, I've had 20 of those like that and, and I've never met them in person. So it's, it's a beautiful thing if you can really, Oh, it's, yeah, dude, it's money. I, and what I like, what I want people to hear there, though, is that so the only value proposition is not just that you can sell the house for more money, but number two, like, you know, local co- local contractors, you will arrange to have the work done and you will manage that process for them. There's right? so I mean, that that's one. That's just one value proposition. And right. you can say, Mr. Seller, I'm going to come over there and again, I'm going to show you from a tiered aspect. Let's look at it from an as is standpoint. You said there's probably some work to do in the property. Let's look and see. Maybe you do need to sell it as is. But then let's look at it as if you you know spend a little money on paying carpet where you're going to be. And then let's look at from top tier from other properties in the area that may have been a flip or people that have done the deferred maintenance. You get to decide where the pricing is going to be on that. Yeah. Because from an advisory standpoint, it's real easy for me to spend your money. And the only time I'm going to, and again, credibility wise, I only want to recommend you to spend a dollar to make ten dollars. A dollar yeah. for dollar exchange on that is going to be no benefit to you and your other heirs on that. So, again, wh- when's the next time you're going to be over at the property, Mister Executor? Yeah, I love it, man. I love it. And and so um, I'm sure everybody's wondering this, and and we'll ask this question. But where do you get these probate and estate sale leads? So initially. Here and I'm going to give away some secrets to our local Louisville market. Um, Gold nuggets, but it's okay. It's all right. So initially, here in our local paper, the second Friday of every month, they released all of the um, all of the deaths, all of the estates. So you could find the estate, you could find the executor or administrator, and you could find the attorney that was handling that. And we would go through with me, and my assistant, for for several years. And it, it was it took all day because we had to build the whole database out. And I got to a point where I was like, you know what? There's got to be a better way. So I found a company called U.S. Probates. Okay. I believe they're out of Tulsa, Oklahoma. Uh, correct me. If I, th- somewhere in 
either Oklahoma or Nevada or something like that. But usprobate.com? usprobates.com. I believe probate. that's it. An S. Yeah, pro, US yeah. probates. Okay. okay. But uh, so every month, uh, I just got mine. I've been working on my list um, today. So I just, we just got our list. Sister and I clean it up. And um, I'll get a list of about, I would say on average, Mike, it's about 200 people. Okay. So what I do is I go through that list and I'm, again, I'm on the analytical side of things. So I go through, I clean it up and by me cleaning it up, there's, I look at the zip codes that I don't want to sell in. There's certain dip, zip codes that, that you don't go into in your town, right? Yeah. So I take those off. I'll go through and pull up, I'll go through the active pendings and solds. Some of them have already gone on the market. So I'll pull those out. I pull up the ones that put them in our property value administration to see a lot of them are uh, nursing homes, apartments, things like that. So they just show the last place pretty much that they lived. I'm not going to solicit a nursing home because I can't sell that. So by the time I I get through that, and some of them, I just don't want to, they may be a a really older, probably $50,000 and below value. So I want to stay in a certain value threshold, just again, to make it worth our our time as well. So by the time I get done with that, I have anywhere from 55 to 85 um, individuals to send, I send a letter out to them and um, I can send you a copy of the letter. If anybody wants that, I'd be happy to, to give it to them, but it's a very compassionate, Hey, sorry about your loss. Here's um, some of the services that we provide contractors. Oh, and by the way, we can help you get a value uh, on the property if you want. But I'll send that out and follow up about three or four days later with a call. With that list that U.S. Probate sends to me, they give me the name of the estate, the person that had passed away, the name of the executor or administrator on there with their address as well and their phone number on that as well and the attorney that's going to be handling that with their address and phone number on that. So there's a lot of value and a lot of meat that they send you. So. I'll call them three or four days later and say, hey, you may receive some correspondence from me. And they're, again, yeah, we're getting a lot of stuff like that. I will get calls from executors saying, you know, your letter was different than the other ones because it was more compassionate. It had a different feel, more professional, and you you carried yourself better. Let me show you something. I meant to pull this out earlier. What I also sit, put in there, and I learned this from a, from a training, and I'll share his name, uh, Mike Torres. Uh, Mike Torres International, MTI Data, does a great thing. So they're getting all of these other mailers. Let's say it's it's Keller Williams, whoever, and it just says their name on there. And you line them all up, which one's going to stand out more? Right. I mean, it's directed so, right at the, the prospect. I have, a, I have a separate stack of probate cards. And I said, you know, these go out to my regular database. But I had this put on there, probate realtor. It's something small, but if they're lining up a bunch of cards that they're getting and they look at this, let's let's call this guy instead. Yeah. Yeah. I love it, man. Just a small little nugget there. Yep. I think that's great. And what I like, so so essentially this U.S. probates is putting together a list, right? They're essentially, they've optimized whatever it is you used to do, right? Just like we did when we were calling expired and we were going into the MLS and we were pulling all the expireds, going to the tax data and then going back to white pages and trying to get all the phone numbers. They, with doing a business with a service like Vulcan 7, where yeah. they essentially they optimize, they've taken all the work out of it for you and they're delivering that list to your inbox once every month, two months, three months? Once a month. So that's once why that's why this is called a recession-proof business. Again, not trying to sound morbid. So sure. every single month, I get a brand new list of people that had, had moved on from the previous right. month. So you know if I didn't get... And I know I went past an idea that I was having from that 55 to 85 people. Okay. I know from that list, I'm going to set an appointment with at least three to four of those individuals. And I'm going to list and sell two to three of those every single month. Dude, that's awesome, man. That's great. Now, keep in mind that this is a heavy lead follow up type of, of, it's not your typical expired, great, come on out, list the property, sell the house. This is a, and they're not giving you objections. They're giving you conditions. You know, we have to clean the house out. That's a condition. It's not an objection. We have to have, we have to wait. We're still in the probate process. We have to wait six months to be able to sell the property. Doesn't mean you can't still go out there and talk to them, but it's a condition a lot of times that you have to, 
wait till the end of the, and, and you ask them, well, where are you in that process? Sometimes yeah. they're three months in, sometimes they're four months in around that three month mark. The, the, a lot of the bills will start coming due and they may have it in mom and dad's account. They may not, but the number one place they do have it is in the equity in the home. So their motivation is going to be a lot more around month two or three when those bills start to come, come due a lot more. Yeah. And you want to be the one that followed up and have, and be the, be the one that's on their radar as, as the person, because a lot of people just like in real estate, you know, they'll send that initial letter. They may make an initial phone call, but a lot of, a lot of realtors, a lot of investors won't do any more than that. I had a coach tell me one time, prospecting will make you a living. Lead follow-up will make you a fortune. Yep. The fortune so the better follow-up, right? It's in, it's in the lead follow-up, especially with this system because so the leads that I'm, the appointments that I'm setting right now were from estates that I called back in April, May, and June. Okay. Because they're coming around full circle. But if you're doing that every single month, guess what? that pool of five to seven leads is going to be there every single month. And you call them back. Hey, where are you guys now? Are you, are you still in the clean out process? Yeah, we finally got over there and my, and you know, my brother's in town. Hey, great. When do you get, do you care if I stop by this weekend? Or are you going to be doing some clean out? I just want to introduce myself, maybe drop off some, uh, some uh, um, figures for you just to show you what properties similar to your mom and dad's are doing in the area. Just so you guys can make a decision when, when it does come time to put the property on the market, would that be helpful for you? Yeah. So, so I got a question for you, man. How do you, how do you, did it take you a while to learn to speak that language or is that something that, is that something you can practice or what, what it, how do people, how do people get good at that? And, and I'm not trying to tr create an excuse for people not to make the phone calls, but it is, it, it is obviously a different situation. I mean, you, sure. They are obviously, um, if, 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 if it, they're still fresh in the process, you know, they're, they're dealing with the death of a loved one. So you yeah. got to handle that somewhat differently than you would with a for sale by owner or expired. You do, but the same, I mean, the same thing, we weren't born like good at for sale by owners or expireds or anything. I mean, we right. had to, we had to go through the suck <laughs> for lack of a better term. You've just got to, you got to make, make this a leg, just like I'll call my expireds. I'll call my for sale by owners in the morning. Uh, then I'll go to my um, estates and I, I put them into Mojo and I'll call them. You know, I'm calling, I called three, you know, I put them three separate months or the, whatever the month is I'm calling. Right. Just so I know. And, um, and then I put them on a lead follow up system on that. But you have to, I mean, I've got scripts that I go by still for every call. Um, so again, it's just practicing, going through it. I still get my head bit off every now and then. Yeah. And it's just you have to be mentally ready. Oh, my God, you're an ambulance chaser. I can't believe you're calling about my mom's house. You you piece of da 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 da, whatever yeah. they're going to get called. Oh. And, and I've called I've, I've talked people off that ledge several times. Yeah. And, and just say, you know, ma'am, I can understand why you would absolutely say that. And, and, and I'm so sorry that, that you had to go through this. Let me tell you where I'm coming from. Can I tell you where I am? And they, and they say, well, fine, go ahead. I'm coming from a compassionate role. I said, I've sold 150 estates in the last six to seven years. So this is what I do. And I'm just calling to see, because a lot of executors that I speak to, like yourself, may not know what to do, when to do and how to do it. So I'm simply coming and being a, a consultant to help you through the process, to walk you through, hold your hand, see if you need any of my services like contracting, clean out, things like that. Is that something that you may need here in the next few months? Yeah. So what questions should people like probate is a, is a, um, for, for most realtors, I think it's probably, um, it's, it's, it's a confusing process because yeah. either they just don't know what they don't know. What kind of questions should they ask a potential probate or a state seller? Yes. To ensure that it really is an opportunity for a listing. Um, well, I mean, my script, I'm always calling, I kind of play a, a, a kind of a, what I call country dumb Yeah. where I'm calling them like ring, ring high. I was calling about the property over here on Baker street. Um, is does that ring a bell? And they're like, well, yeah, that was mom's house. Perfect. I wanted to make sure that I was talking to the right person. Are you, are you the executor? Great. Listen, I wanted to see when do you and or the estate looking to sell that property? Well, we're not sure. Okay, great. Is that a property that you do have to sell? in order to settle the estate. 
because sometimes they may, you know what, we're keeping it in the, in the family. Yeah. We're going to make it a rental property. Um, no, I'm moving into it. That happens a lot. People sell their house. They've got a house free and clear. They can sell their house, move into this one. Um, yeah. because it was, is lent to them. Um, are you choosing the realtor or is the attorney choosing the realtor? You want to find out if that attorney is playing a big role for them. Uh, great. Will you be choosing the realtor remotely or will you be coming into town? That's for the, the estates that are out of town, executors out of town, excuse me. Uh, fantastic. When will you be starting the process of choosing a realtor? So you're looking, it's just like any script. You're looking for the when, why, where, how, yeah. um, Will you need help getting the property prepared for sale? Perfect. Would it be helpful if I emailed you a market analysis of the property so you can see what it may be worth? Are you looking for, this is a good one. Are you looking for a private cash buyer or do you want it on the open market? Yeah. Because even though we're wearing, I'm coming in and I'm telling them, Mr. and Mrs. Seller or executor, I'm wearing my realtor hat right now. Okay. But I'm also an investor. Okay. And I also have a pool of investors that I work with. So if we come in there and you don't want to listen and sell it, I've got some guys that I can bring in. I'm going to represent them. They can write an offer. You don't have to put it on the open market. If I can put you two together, is that the way that you want to go? Oh, there's another channel I can do. Or if I'm an investor like you are, go in there. I had a guy that was right down the street. It was an estate. And he wanted, he said, look, I don't want to sell this. I don't want to get on the open market. You give me $80,000 right now, I'll sell it to you. I said, okay, I'll write a contract up, $80,000. The property needed $20,000 worth of work. Had my guys go in there, clean it up, clean it out, paint, cabinets, things like that. Um, I put it on the market and sold it for $165,000. I walked away at closing with the check for sixty grand. There you go. That's better than the, the $3,000 real estate commission that you missed out on, right? That's not bad. Yeah. So those are, <laughs> those are fewer and far between. Get, don't get me wrong. Yeah. But that they are out there. So, yeah, so you can you can approach it in different levels. Mr. Seller, do you want an open market? Do you want an investor to come in here? Do you want me to buy this from you? Because you will get that. Are you an investor? I do wear that hat, Mr. Seller. First and foremost, I want to wear my realtor hat and play an advisory role to you. That's going to get you in the in the door a lot better than a, than an investor in my okay. in my experience. Okay. So one question I, that um, did come to mind is um, what percentage of of executors choose the real estate agent, and what percentage of uh, attorneys choose the real estate agent? I'd say, in my experience, eighty to ninety percent of the executors are choosing the realtor. Okay. So that's the best place to start. Then is is with the with the executor. Yes, but but also but start calling those um, attorneys as well and make a relationship with them. Just saying, hey, I, I would, even if the property sold, you know, Mr. Attorney, I know that uh, you were working on the on the back end of, you know, the Smith account over here. Do you have a go to realtor that you refer business to? OK, can I take you to lunch and just show you what I've done to sell over 100 and such Okay. estate properties and because because they they want to get paid just like anybody else yeah and if they have some bozo in there that doesn't know what they're doing or an experience that's not going to work for them if i can show you how i've been able to do this take care of it get you paid faster mr attorney can we sit down you know i'll take you lunch i know this do you specialize in working with the states yeah yes great let's get together i'm excited i want to show you my system that i use and see if it can help you close your clients faster Dude, I love it, man. I th you've got a great little niche worked out. And I think that you, you, you really, I don't want to say perfected it, but you've got a great system built around it. So the leads come in, the letter goes out, the phone call goes out because the letter warms the phone call up. Yes. And then you're going in for the appointment and you're setting, uh, you, you know, you're, you're setting um, two to three appointments uh, or no, you said four or five appointments and then get I, it. Yeah. And, the, and it, then, depends, it depends on the month, you know, the more, they're more, um, I guess houses on the list, the more opportunities, the more phone calls there are. Um, and it, again, I, it's rare that they call me anymore, but uh, you will get some come, Hey, come on. I want to talk to you. We liked your letter type call, but if you're doing this every single day now, again, with 50 to 80 people, you're not going to have a lot of calls as, as the end of the month goes by, but, right. and the ones that are out of town, those are the real gold. If you see the executor is in, you know, Poughkeepsie or Montgomery, Alabama, those are the ones that you really want to talk to because they're out of town. They may not be coming in town and they need somebody to take care of stuff.
I love it, man. And so like that represents what, 25 to 30 percent of your business. You're doing two or three deals a month. Yeah. And I, I, I'll bet you a lot of people that watch or listen to this don't have any sort of uh, probate or estate sale plan at all. And so if you want to take more listings to me, I mean, this is a great show because we're essentially saying, hey, you can invest X right with usprobates.com. Yeah. And you can essentially add two, three, four, five listings per month into your in, into your to your bottom line and scale that right. And you know that, hey, I what? So I, I'm just so, and I know people ask this: What is the monthly investment for U.S. probates? I think I'm spending 188 dollars. Now, keep in mind that's going to be different for every market. You know, larger markets you're going to have yeah. more people, so that's going to be scalable on that but even if it was 500 or a thousand though and you're getting two to three you know would you spend a thousand dollars to make five thousand dollars you know yeah so the so the return is 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 really really good and i think to me it seems really it seems like it seems like it would be simple to scale that model because like people like you have gone before and done it and people like you come from a place of abundance and are willing to share you know what they're doing. Um, you said you had a letter, and, and obviously we, we can uh, we can give out your information towards the yeah. end of the show so that people can connect with you and get the letter. And if they have questions about the process, but man, I love it because it's it, it it's essentially it's one one task creates the next task creates the next task creates the next task which creates yes. appointment which creates the 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 listing which creates the sale. And, that and I'll go back and, and again, we're talking and we'll get into some content a little bit more, but I'll, if I haven't been able to talk to him, I'll send him out. This is from a training. I don't know if you can see that. Yeah. Um, this is a, uh, the probate timeline. It just shows the steps month one through two, all the way through month nine through 18, what they should be doing, where they should be. This is a, uh, an estate executor's duties during the probate process. There's, there's nine different things that a probate or an executor should do. Now, if you're an, an executor and you get that in the mail that show early on, that says, here's the things that you should be doing. I've gone into some listings before. This is on the refrigerator. And, and again, it's just value. And let's say, you know, you're look, let's say you're doing, I know you and I both do a lot of content on, on Facebook and Instagram or whatever. Send this out as a mailer that month to your, to your um, database, send this out the next month. Send these out both together and talk about the value of having a will. Yeah. Because I come across, you know, my sphere and people, I'm like, you've got to have a will because it's the instructions for who you want to be an executor. Because I can tell you the nightmares of not having having that. And then the state decides that. And that's when it really gets problems. And so you can sit on there and say, hey, today I'm going to talk about a probate timeline, where you should be. I'm going to talk about the, all the nine points of being an executor, what, where you should do, or here's the reasons you should have a will. What I'm going to talk about. But there's so much meat and content that you can record and, and put out, and it'll also that'll start attracting you business as well. So, are you sending with, with your letter? Does do those two pieces of uh, paper go out with the letter, or does the letter just go out by itself? That one goes out. Um, I'll read you my letter if you, if you want me to. Yeah, read it, man. Let's it, hear what it says. It just says, uh, dear such and such, we're writing in regards to the estate property located at blank. Our group realizes this may be a difficult time for you and the individuals involved with your loved one's estate. To that end, we have assisted several families that are going through the same issues that you may find useful, excuse me, that you may find yourself facing today. What we offer is a consultative role to make the settling of the estate transition as smoothly as possible Please find listed below some of the various services we provide, free market analysis of the property, professional real estate sales services, worldwide internet marketing, home clean out, maintenance and home repair. If you are considering selling the above mentioned property and are in need of any of those services listed above, we would greatly welcome the opportunity to meet with you in order to discuss your plans in more detail. We thank you for your time and consideration and we look forward to speaking you, with you in the future. Man, that's money. So again, consultative, soft, it's not, I mean, so they're getting, they're getting other letters that say, Hey, I'll give you 150 for the house. Yeah. Call me if you're interested and that's it. Yep. And, and, and I, and I know this in my market, there's not a lot of realtors competing in this game. Like it, it's, it would probably be, if you were in my market, it would probably be you and a bunch of other investors. There's nobody calling this because they're, they don't either, they don't have a system. They're afraid to make the call because they don't know what to say. 
And here's the great thing. These properties are vacant. Yeah. There's nobody there. So, I mean, you're not going to have a lot of competition on this other than maybe the, uh, the investors probably more than other realtors from my experience. The property's vacant. Motivation is high. And when you say recession proof, you say it, it's recession proof because, I mean, people, they die, right? I mean, people that's die. And you've got more of them dying now. Again, not trying to sound morbid or anything, but this is just, and, and I want to preface that because some people are like, that's just, that's just disturbing. Right. I get it. And I got over that a long time ago because people, people need your services. Because yeah. when you think about it, you know, a 45 year old or a 47 year old that was named in their mom and dad's will, they probably haven't had to deal with selling a house like this. Yet. They may have bought a house, but they haven't had to sell or close up an estate, clean out do all these things that, that, that come along with that. So if you can start to align yourself with a lot of service, and it's so easy to, to line. You already have a, a, a list of people that you work with. You may just not know it. So right. if you encapsulate that, put it in a package and deliver that and be, be genuinely of service and, and understanding, man, it just, it's, it's so, I tell people all the time, I'm like, why are you not doing this? I mean, I'd rather do this all day, then bang my head against a, an expired listing. Michael, this is so good, man. And, and like, I like, I hope. I mean, I hope not everyone sees this. I hope no one sees it in my market, and <laughs> because it's really a no-brainer to make that type of investment and get that type of return, especially when you're in a marketplace where <coughs> um, listings are everything. I mean, we're yeah. still in the Midwest here, and I know yeah. in some of the major metropolitan markets they've become more of a buyer's market, but that's not happened here where we're at. We still have limited inventory and people are buying houses. And yeah. so if you've got listings, um, you're, you're going to make money. And, and, and so, I, dude, like, I love it. I, I love it. This, I mean, if you're, yeah, if you're right. If you're listing centric and I've got friends, you know, role play partners and other Asian friends that are down in like the, the Naples, Sarasota market. And I'm just like, you of all people should be going after this because your, your demographic is so much older you've got the secondary home markets down there where they may have one or two properties that they have to sell if somebody passes away. Yeah. So you've got to, you know, really consider where, where you are. And these aren't, these aren't going away. In fact, they're going to be increasing. So if you're, if you're going down your pecking order, keep doing what you're doing and what makes you successful. Don't stop doing that. If you have a niche that you're strong at, do it. But I know so many people want to say, well, I'm doing three or four different things that I'm going to start adding for, for 2020. Don't do that. Don't do that. Find one. Make this if you want to make this your one and uh, and just pick out a list because people need that service. Yep. I always say niche, master, leverage, repeat. Niche, Amen. Master, leverage, repeat. And um, do this is pure gold, man. I, I hope um, this one will need a second listen for me and, and, and I'm sure most other person who hear it or watch it. Um, you did mention something at the beginning of the podcast that I'm yep. curious about because you said you were what uh, 18 years at Remax and then you moved to EXP. Six, 16 years and then moved to EXP. Remax and moved to EXP. What, I'm curious, why did you make that move? Um, I was I was comfortable. I wasn't uh, comfortable is a danger, and I tell people all the time when I'm doing a lunch and learn. Comfortable is a dangerous word, isn't it? Yeah, I wasn't challenging myself. It was it wasn't coming easy to me, but I was sitting in my office and I was doing my same thing every single day. And I was being heavily recruited to uh, to KW by a friend of mine yeah. for about two years. And she moved over to EXP and I saw these other larger agents here locally. And I'm like, what the heck's going on? So I gave her a call and I said, uh, what is this? Tell me about this. And she showed me the model and it made sense to me. And I said, well, I can take that 5% franchise fee that I was using or that I was giving to Remax and I can spend that on myself by buying stock, right? Of which I've bought 1,400 shares of so far. Yeah. Love and I can also, that. let's see, what else can I do? Oh, I can hit another benchmark award called Icon where I get my $16,000 cap gifted back to me, which I just hit that before my anniversary date. So I'm an Icon agent. So I had a $30,000 shift from where I was there. I don't have an office fee, which I was paying $1,200 a month for with Remax. Yeah. So I'm saving there. I was able to take all my systems. I had a, a Real Geeks website, not a knock on Real Geeks. They're a fine institution. does a great job. But I got rid of that. I got rid of my Infusionsoft. 
which was costing me, you know, 600 bucks a month. Yeah. So I'm saving $7,200 there. So I've got this huge shift of, so my profits have gone up because I have less expenses. I'm using our KV core system. Yeah. So I could go on and on about that. Dude, that's amazing, man. Well, I'm, I'm certainly glad you saw the light and joined the family. Um, I was a KW guy and, and came over um, in 2000. 18, in February 2018. So uh, I'm, I've been over just about as long as you have, but man, it was the best decision we ever made. And I don't want to turn this into a commercial for EXP. Sure. Um, but certainly. And what, what do you mean? I'm not. I'm not. <laughs> <laughs> but certainly it is important where, where you decide to, uh, to, to, to do business. And um, you said something that that really um kind of hit home with me too, because I often have this conversation, oftentimes have this conversation with other agents is it is such a dangerous thing to get comfortable because, you know, you, then you, it's like good is the enemy of great, right? It's like, you're going through the motions every day and then you, you kind of start sleep, sleepwalking through life, so to speak. You know what I mean? Comfort, comfort leads to complacency. And then you, then you realize it's like, if you're not, what's the old saying? If you're not going forward, you're going backwards. Yeah. There's no such thing as just, it's just staying level yeah. grounds. And that's, I've always been a, you know, I'm looking, always looking around saying, okay, where am I? Am I pushing forward? Am I challenging myself? Am I continually growing? So I'm always analyzing that and where I am. Um, not, not necessarily, you know, where I am versus the competition, but we're always kind of, you know, keeping a look at, you and I are both probably competitive people or sports people from back. And you want to, you know, you want to stay competitive. As I get older, there's new people coming up biting on our ass. And I'm just, yeah. and I'm looking around saying, is there always a better way to do that on every single system that I have in the business that I have? Um, can I deliver better service by going to another business for six, for 16 years? It wasn't so, but yeah. I finally looked at this model and said, you know what? There's so many different ways. I, I'm still the same realtor that I was. Okay. I'm still delivering the same service, doing the same things. It sure. could be, it could be banana real estate on the moniker and I'm yeah. still going to be delivering the same thing and doing what I am. But the, the back office, the systems that, that EXP has in place has allowed me to, you know, branch out from an agent recruitment standpoint and starting to grow my, that's, I mean, that's a whole nother conversation uh, yeah. from bringing agents in all over the country. I'm not the kind of agent that wanted to build a large team. And babysit agents. I just didn't want that. I've always been strong doing it myself or with an assistant. Sure. But I recognize the value that I have a lot of tools that I can share with people and help them grow their business. So with that, I'm trying to bring in agents that I can help flourish and grow in their markets and say, hey, have you tried this nugget? Have you tried the systems that I have in place? Let me share these with you and coach you up and help you grow. Love it, man. Well, this has been one of my favorite shows. I mean, th this like... I knew you would drop some gold, but I, like this is truly actionable information that people can take when when they get off uh, this podcast or when they get off this video and, and actually implement into their business today and really start making an impact right away. And those are my favorite kind of shows, the, the real actionable type shows. Yeah. So I really appreciate you coming on and being so open about everything that you're doing. Um, if people want to connect with you to learn more about um, your business, how you're how you're how you're doing probates. Uh, sure. Estates want to get a copy of your letter. Want to learn more about EXP? How can they get a hold of you? Uh, my cell phone is area code 502-345-7698. and my email is michael at michaelhigdon.com. That's awesome, brother. Well, I appreciate you coming on. Um, any pleasure. last words? Um, I mean, just this is a it's a very simple, repeatable business that will help you even in the hard times this is something that can be there for you if the expires you know go away and if you're having trouble finding a different area to find leads and if you're listing centric you'd be silly not to at least uh, invest a little time and look into this love it love it love it michael thanks so much as usual i love sharing these stories week after week because i know this show is literally changing agents financial lives my own included do me a big favor. If you know someone that might enjoy the podcast, please, please, please share it with them. And if you like the podcast, please go to wherever you listen to podcasts and subscribe and leave me a quick five-star review. If you ever want to jump on a call with me for 30 minutes for free, 
to do a free business strategy session. Go to meetmikewall.com. And that is it for this one, folks. Thanks so much. Michael, thank you. Thank you, guys. Appreciate it. Good job, man.